How, are you, how many of y'all glad to be in the house of God this evening? This production called The Time Machine. The songwriter said, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all. our senior pastor, Pastor Rod, and his wife, Stephanie, our first lady, and on behalf of the leadership of this church and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we welcome each and every one of you to our 5 p.m. service, a special service. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. You may take your seats for a moment. This is a special service this evening in uh, honor of Black History Month. And uh, just to let you know that we are going to look back on our religious history, right? The people who um, impacted us from way back then that we are, we are able to be here. So I want you to just be drawn into whatever is happening this evening. Amen? Amen. 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 And applaud everything. Amen? Amen. 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 And especially when you see me come out because I'm up there, just give a loud, loud applause. Okay, that would be awesome. So I just welcome each and every one of you. And uh, I just want to know, is there anyone who has never been to a Sunday evening service? Let me put it that way. And you're here for the first time this evening. Never been to a Sunday evening service. This is the first time you're coming here at Bethel. Amen. You're all regular? Oh, yes. Okay. Could you just please stand? We want to just welcome you in our own special way. In our own special way. And uh, Bethel, let's welcome them the way we welcome them. We welcome you into this place. We welcome you into the Lord's house where the Lord
All right. Do you feel like greeting each other? Yes. Of course, this is therapy, right? Yeah. Right, you haven't seen, um, a lot of you haven't seen each other since this morning. <laughs> so, you need to just get up and just let everyone feel welcome, right? Amen. <laughs> is that the bathroom back here is out of bounds for this evening. But if you go across the street, if you look left and right to make sure no cars are coming, you go across the street and go through that red door um, that's right on the right as you go over across the street. There's a bathroom there that you can use. Amen? It's in the annex for those of you um, who know what that is. Right? And to my to our first-time visitors, we welcome you. And you might have gotten a card. On that card, I want you to put your names. Right? You did it already? Then you too? Okay, okay. You just want to call them out, right? You don't want to be the only new person here. Okay. Right. So, uh, this is what we want to do. So, uh, those of you who did not stand because you might feel you don't want to do that. There's a card. We want you to put your name on the card. And this is what we're going to do. At this church, we pray every single day of the year. No matter what, we pray. And on Mondays, we pray for our first-time visitors. Okay? So, that, that, so that's what you, all you have to do. Put your name on the card. We're going to pray for you. We're not going to call you and send you a mail and tell you to send us anything. Amen? We just want to pray for you. We're going to call your name to the Lord. And who doesn't want somebody to pray for them? Amen. Amen. So that's what we do. So put your name on the card. Drop it in the offering when you walk by. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. And other announcements. Other announcements. Uh, what is happening this week? All night prayer. All night prayer. On Friday, um, March 1st, it will be all night prayer. Thursday will be our Bible study. Amen? So keep those in mind. And uh, I think that's it for now. Now, we are going to be blessed with the ministry of dance. Amen? Yeah. You write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? 
Why are you beset with gloom? Just because I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like suns and like moons, with the certainty of times, just like hope springing I, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. That my sass and it's upset too. <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because I laugh. <laughs> As if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words. You can cut me with your lies. You can kill me with your hatefulness. But just like life, I rise. Does my sex and it's offend you? Oh. Does it come as a surprise that I dance? As if I have diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history, shame, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. A black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak miraculously clear. I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so, naturally, there I go rising. Just before we turn it over, we just have one more announcement. March 9th, Morgan State University Historic Black College Choir will be here on, on, uh, on Saturday evening at 5 o'clock. If you need tickets, see your sister Chevelle in the back. Morgan State. Anybody, everybody, yes. anybody yeah. went to Morgan State here? <coughs> Nobody went to Morgan State? Okay. It's a Black Historic Choir coming up here to do a concert here for us for our church, for our community, and they're going to be sharing, the young people are going to be sharing about the fight of what it means to be educated. Isn't that good? Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn it over to Sister. Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right, so you are in for a treat today. Um, we all know that it's Black History Month, and we know about, you know, the Malcolm X's and the, and, and the Rosa Parks, but how many people know about the history of ministry? pastors and, and, and gospel artists, right? Well, tonight we're going to go back through time and you guys will be enlightened and enjoy and be blessed. Okay, and here's the time machine. Well, I really enjoyed that. It was much better than last year. And I really appreciated the creativity of the production. Yes, yes, I really did too. I mean, the actors were really just so awesome. Uh, I, everything was just so excellent. I, I want to encourage them. You know what? I'm really just so proud of my heritage. You're right. And I learned something too. I did not know that Benjamin Banneker was only 21 years old when he invented the first clock in America. He was a young man. Yeah, that was sort of new for me as well. I mean, everything in that play was just really so awesome. The costumes, the set, the design, everything was awesome, awesome, awesome. I really wish I could see it again. Yeah. Alex, how did you enjoy the show? Oh, it was great. I learned a lot about the inventors and the black activists and uh, all those amazing people. But you know, Dad, as a pastor, wouldn't you like to see the history of spiritual leaders like in ministry from like the past? You're right, Alex. We should learn a lot more about our religious history. You know, about the people who broke ground and made it possible to spread the gospel and how they encourage our people during their times of challenges. Definitely. Why don't you take that book? I have an idea. Right? Let's go back in time. Wait, back in time? What? Wow, that's a great idea, dear. I am ready.
to go back in time. Wait, hold up. We're going to go back in time? I'm, 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 I'm confused. How are we going to do that? By using your imagination, son. Get it? Oh, okay. Well, right. let us buckle up for this exciting journey. <laughs> Widely considered to be the father of the black church, Richard Allen, seventeen sixty to eighteen thirty one founded the African Methodist Episcopal Church, AME. Born into slavery in Philadelphia, Allen was allowed to buy his freedom at the age of 20. Ordained a Methodist minister in 1784, he became increasingly put off by the racist segregation of the white Methodist community. He responded by founding the AME, first as a local congregation, and then uniting with the group of churches from surrounding cities to form the first black denomination in the United States. Elected as the institution's first bishop, Allen was a major influence in the development of black cultural identity and an inspiration for future generation of leaders who would use the church as a major force for organization and unification in the black I help the leaders unite the black church because racism should not once be mentioned in God's church. The future is yours. From 1906 to 1909, William J. Seymour preached his radical form of Christianity from a rundown building in Los Angeles. His church was the host to thousands of visiting ministers, many of whom incorporated Seymour's teaching about experiencing the Holy Spirit when they returned to their own congregations. The event became known as the Azusa Street Revival and is largely credited as the origin point for the modern Pentecostal or charismatic movement. Everybody should be filled with the Holy Ghost. James Cone, born 1938, was dedicated his life to confronting racism in the United States through his experiences in ministry, education, and authorship. His work largely focused on analyzing the compatibility of Christianity with the multiple philosophies of the black civil rights movement. In 1970, Cone published his landmark work, A Black Theology of Liberation, taking a radical new look at Christianity through the pained lens of the oppressed black community in America. You see, to sing about freedom and to pray for its coming is not enough. Freedom, freedom must be actualized in the history of the oppressed people who accept the intellectual challenge to analyze the world and for the purpose of changing it. That, my family, is the truth. The oppressed black community, in the oppressed black community, the church has hope. Yes. College, 
Dean of the Howard University School of Religion and President of Morehouse College. He also served as the first black president of the Atlanta School Board. Mays was a frequent and vocal critic of segregation and racism in America. He was an important <coughs> early mentor to many of the civil rights leaders who were products of the black colleges, including Martin Luther King Jr. Additionally, his written work and widespread respect in the academic community helped to coalesce support for the civil rights movement among the nation's intellectual elite. It's better to aim high than not to aim at all. You got a future. I see it in you. Okay. Black Power Between Heaven and Hell, Tony Chappelle wrote, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. was the equivalent of the rap group Public Enemy, the protest politician Jesse Jackson, and the Congressional Black Caucus all in one. Powell, 1908 to 1972, was born in New Haven, Connecticut to a minister who headed the Abyssinian Baptist Church in Harlem, New York, a church he would lead himself beginning in 1937. In 1945, Powell was elected as a Democrat to the House of Representatives, representing the 22nd Congressional District, which included Harlem. He was the first black congressman from New York, and one of only two black congressmen at the time. Powell challenged the informal ban on black representatives using capital facilities by taking black constituents to dine with him in the whites only house restaurant. Yeah. Lord is no respecter of persons. He deserves to be here in the church house, the white house. Let me say it again. God is no respecter of persons. You deserve to be here in the church house and the White House. <laughs> Alexander Cromwell, 1819 1898 was an American scholar, an Episcopalian minister, and founder of the American Negro Academy, the first major learned society for black Americans. He was also an early advocate of African American self-help. Born to the son of an African prince and a free mother, he attended an interracial school, an institute run by abolitionists and had private tutors. In 1839, Cromwell was denied admission to the General Theological Seminary of the Episcopal Church because of his race. So he studied theology privately and became an ordained Episcopalian minister in the Diocese of Massachusetts in 1844 at the age of 25. In 1873, after spending some 20 years in Liberia as a missionary, Cromwell came to Washington, D.C., where he was appointed missionary at large of the colored people. Seven years later, he founded and served as the first pastor of St. Luke's Episcopal Church. Cromwell, whose vision was that the black church should be a place not only of worship, but also a social service, he encouraged black ministers in Washington to establish charitable institutions for their race. We are here to serve at home, but also abroad. Longtime dean of 
Chapels in Theology at Morehouse College and Boston University. Howard Thurman, 1899 to 1981, was a major proponent of nonviolent protest as a primary tactic in the movement for black civil rights. While leading a delegation to South Asia in 1936, Thurman spoke at length with Mahatma Gandhi about his experiences with nonviolence. This conversation would have a strong influence on Thurman's work for the entirety of his career. Thurman's seminal work, the 1949 book, Jesus and the Disinherited, would be a major influence on Martin Luther King Jr. and other black religious leaders. I had a dream, but Martin Luther King ran with it. <laughs> what more can be said about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Person of the Year in 1963, Time Magazine also included MLK, 1929-1968, in the top 10 people of the country. Ordained as a Baptist minister in 1948, King soon attended a lecture on the life of Mahatma Gandhi and was inspired to delve deeper in Gandhi's social teaching. In February of 1959, Dr. King and his wife visited India, where they studied Mahatma Gandhi's methods of nonviolent protest. Gunnar John, chairman of the Nobel Peace Prize Committee, presenting the Nobel Prize to Dr. King in 1964 said, Martin Luther King is the first person in the Western world to have shown us that a struggle can be waged without violence. He is the first to make the message of brotherly love a reality in the course of his struggle. And he has brought this message to all men, to all nations and races. Today we pay tribute to Martin Luther King, the man who has never abandoned his faith in the unarmed struggle he is waging, who has suffered for his faith, who has been imprisoned on many occasions, whose home has been subject to bomb attacks, whose life and the lives of his family have been threatened, and who nevertheless has never faltered. In the course of about 12 years, from 1956 to April 4th, 1968, with the exception of Abraham Lincoln and the Emancipation Proclamation, MLK may have done more to achieve racial, social, political justice and equality in America than any other event or person in American history. Tonight, I'm going to ask Mahalia to come tonight to the stage. Sing my heart glad, Mahalia. Yeah. 
historical black church is proud of our heritage. Our founder, Bishop Roderick Caesar Sr., came to America in his youth from St. Lucia, gave his life to the Lord, and immediately began establishing mission ministries. Bethel Gospel Tabernacle was birthed, and today his son, Dr. Bishop Roderick Caesar Jr. is carrying on this awesome work as Bethel's international bishop. He's proud to sit under the current pastor of this great ministry, his son, Pastor Roderick Caesar III, grandson of the founder. Three generations of preachers who have taken us forward through the unadulterated preaching and teaching of God's word. Our past, present, and future have glorified God, and the best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. glorified, the time has been passed, and the legacy continues. Especially the spiritual leaders, especially us, Mrs. Jackson, that sing that beautiful song. Uh, speaking of music, can we go back in time and uh, look at the musical side of things? It was like the spiritual. Sure, sure. I have another book. Honey, pass that other book right there. It's, 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 it's in there. It's in this one. <laughs> oh, yes. slave was a grim one during the 19th century. Because of this permanent life of servitude, many slaves tried to escape while dying in the process. The importance of song and music was for so long overlooked by plantation owners. Initially, slaves used song and music to boost the overall happiness of the people they worked with. During difficult times of difficult labor, slaves would break out in a song to pass the time and lift their spirits. Slaves would often sing songs that praise the Lord or ask the Lord for help and guidance. Walk with me, Lord, walk with me. All along this tedious journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Most slaves were devout Christians, not only to give them hope and faith, but to also please the white men into possibly shortening their time as a slave. These songs were constantly heard in groups and were crucial to getting through the day. Slaves actually put codes into songs to relay secret messages among their slave community. Today, these songs are well known because of the amount of specific information coded within its lyrics. Wade in the Water specifically explains to runaway slaves how to escape from bloodhounds. Furthermore, the song contains a reference to Jordan and a promised land. This refers to Canada, which at this time was a non-slave state. 
Follow the Drinking Gourd is probably the most popular slave song ever created. It is popular because of the wealth of information provided in its lyrics. These songs can sometimes be considered hybrid, having both spiritual and coded significance. What made it special was that it gave hidden advice and also contained a complete coded map with full details of how to escape to Canada. The song has actually been completely decoded and translated and tells the steps on how to escape to freedom. In summation, the importance of song in the slave community was for so long overlooked. What started at first as a way to bolster spirits and provide hope and strength turned into an intricate and innovative way to communicate secretly. Songs became so elaborate and descriptive that they could actually provide exact directions on how to escape to freedom. Music today may not have the same importance to African Americans as it did during the 19th century, but a strong interest in music is still prevalent today in the African American culture. Follow the drinking Thomas Dorsey, 1901 to 1960, was an American pianist, arranger, and composer who is considered to be one of the most important figures in the development and popularization of gospel music. Thomas Dorsey was known as the father of black gospel music. A prolific composer, Dorsey spent his early career playing and singing the blues. However, after undergoing a spiritual conversion and experiencing the tragic death of his wife and child, Dorsey forsook popular music and focused his work on religious music. Dorsey was the music director at Pilgrim Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois. He also toured for many years and wrote hits that would usher in the popularity of many of the biggest stars, including Sister Rosetta Thorpe and Elvis Presley. Dorsey's best known composition, Take My Hand, Precious Lord, was performed by Mahalia Jackson and was a favorite of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Another composition, Peace in the Valley, was a hit and has been performed by dozens of other artists, including Albertina Walker. Albertina, let me introduce you to Albertina Walker.
Clarence Cameron White was born on August 10, 1880, in Clarksville, Tennessee, to James W. White, a doctor and school principal, and Jenny Scott White, a violinist who studied at Oberlin Conservatory of Music. His father died when he was only two years old. White relocated with his mother and younger brother to Oberlin, Ohio, to live with her parents, where he was first exposed to the violin. Dramatic works by the composer were his best known, such as the incidental music for the play Tambor and the opera Oanga. During the first decades of the 20th century, White was considered the foremost violinist of his race. He was a member of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. He says, and I quote, My mother took me to hear the Messiah sung at the conservatory, and I came away humming snatches of it. My mother thought I had a good ear for music, and persuaded my grandfather, who was a religious man, to give me his violin. I was only six at the time. Nevertheless, my grandfather pouted. If I give him the violin, I, I will give him the violin. But if he ever plays at a dance, I'll take it back. His grandfather never had the time to take it back. That's right. See, I still have the violin. That grandfather never had to take it back from me. Thank God. Clarence died on June 30th, 1960. Shirley Ann Caesar Williams. Shirley Ann Caesar Williams, known professionally as Shirley Caesar, was born October 13, 1938, in Durham, North Carolina. She is an American gospel singer, songwriter, and recording artist whose career has spanned over six decades. Caesar first began singing and performing for her family and friends. She began singing as Baby Shirley Caesar all over the Carolinas as invitations poured in. She could only perform on weekends due to being in school during the weekdays. She began recording at the age of 12 in 1951 on the Federal Recording label. She has won 12 Grammy Awards, including the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, 14 Stellar Awards, 18 Doves, and a host of other awards, too numerous to mention. She has sold 2.2 million albums since 1991. Edwin Reuben Hawkins was born in Oakland, California on August 19, 1943. At the age of seven, he was already the keyboardist to accompany the family's gospel group. American gospel musician, pianist, choir master, composer, and arranger. He was one of the originators of the urban contemporary gospel sound. He, as leader of the Edwin Hawkins Singer, was probably best known for his arrangement of Oh Happy Day, 1968-69, which was included on the Songs of the Century list. Once Oh Happy Day started being played in other parts of the country, 
and the group was made aware of its rising success on the radio, they began to get in contact with the right people in the industry who helped them get a major record deal. But it was old happy day that rocketed to sales of more than a million copies within two months. Hawkins died on January 15, 2018 in his home in Pleasanton, California at the age of 74. Andre Edward Crouch and his twin sister Sandra were born on July 1st, 1942 in San Francisco, California to parents Benjamin and Catherine Lee Hunted Crouch was an American gospel singer, songwriter, arranger, record producer, and pastor referred to as the father of modern day gospel music by contemporary Christians and gospel music professionals. Crouch was known for his compositions, The Blood Will Never Lose His Power, My Tribute to God Be the Glory, and soon and very soon, he collaborated on some of his recordings with artists such as Stevie Wonder, Elder Barge, Philip Bailey, Shaka Khan, Sheila E., and vocal group Take Six, and many recording artists covered his material, including Bob Dylan, Barbara Mandrell, Paul Simon, Elvis Presley and Rich Little Richard, Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror, Madonna's Like a Prayer, and The Power, a duet between Elton John and Little Richard. Crouch was noted for his talent of incorporating contemporary secular music styles into the gospel music he grew up with. His efforts in this area helped pave the way for an American contemporary Christian music during the 1960s and 70s. Crouch's original music arrangements were heard in the films The Color Purple, for which he received an Oscar nomination, and Disney's The Lion King, as well as NBC's television series, Amen. Awards and honors received by him include seven Grammy Awards, induction into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame in 1998, and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. When he was young, Crouch's parents owned and operated Crouch Cleaners, a dry cleaning business, as well as a restaurant business in Los Angeles, California. They ran a Christian street preaching ministry a hospital and prison ministry and when Crouch was 11 his father was invited to speak for several weeks at a small church as a guest preacher he was encouraged to play during the services at the piano Crouch found the key in which the congregation was singing and started to play after this Crouch honed his piano playing skills and in time wanted to write his own music when he was 14 years old, he wrote his first gospel song. He died on January 8th, 2015.
born January 26, 1970, is an American gospel musician, singer, songwriter, choir director, and author. He is known for leading urban contemporary gospel choirs such as The Family, God's Property, and One Nation Dream, and has won multiple awards, including 12 Grammy Awards. Variety Doug Franklin as a reigning king of urban gospel. A native of Fort Worth, Texas, Franklin was raised by his aunt Gertrude, having been abandoned as a baby by his mother. Gertrude collected and resold aluminum cans to raise money for Kirk to take piano lessons from the age of four. Kirk excelled in music, being able to read and write music while also playing by ear. Kirk Franklin studied music with June Kelly and the singing chaperones at Oscar Dean Wyatt High School. He was under her tutelage for music direction and she allowed him to be the pianist for the choir. After the shooting death of a friend at the age of 15, Franklin returned to the church where he began to direct the choir once again. He also co-founded a gospel group, The Humble Hearts, which recorded one of Franklin's compositions. After releasing a 1995 Christian album entitled Kirk Franklin and the Family Christmas, the group released What You Looking For in 1996. The album has certified two times platinum and earned Franklin his first Grammy Award for Best Contemporary Soul Gospel Album. Yes, yes. Come on, church. Let's do it. Part of this production, I would like for you to come up. All right, let's, let's give it up for the family. Theo, Mr. and Mrs. Thompson. All right. And the narrators. Oh, real live, pastor, senior pastor, yeah. real live in person. Yeah. Give it up for the men and the women that played the parts and the singers. And let's all just hold hands and take our bow. This is the time machine. Over. And we also want to give God the honor for our directress. Yeah. She did a great job. And also the young lady that danced, yeah. Wasn't this beautiful in the done? Come on, put your hands together for all this beautiful talent right here. Oh. 
All right. Yeah. Perhaps if there's anyone here that does not know the Lord, uh, you've heard, you've seen this movie, you've seen the uh, inspiring uh, uh, preachers, teachers, and musicians, uh, but you're here and you realize you yourself do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You wouldn't want this day to go by. You wouldn't want this uh, this play to end and to finish without giving you an opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So if you're here and you do not know Jesus Christ, you do not have a relationship with him, I'd ask you to just raise your hand. We have people that are willing to pray with you if you're here you realize, hey, something's missing. I don't have a relationship with Jesus. Is there anyone here that does not know Jesus today? I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Is there anyone here? All right. So, dear God, I just thank you so much for each person. I pray your blessing over each individual. I pray your uh, just protection over uh, all of us as we uh, would leave from here, but not from your presence, God. I pray that you take us to a separate destination safely. I thank you for the hard work that went into this play. I thank you for uh, just the result that it yielded and just how uh, you were glorified through it and how a lot of uh, truths were, were brought to light as a result of uh, this play and the hard work and dedication of each person involved. And so I just thank you and praise you for all that you're doing uh, in the lives of each person here, all that you're doing in the life of this ministry. And I pray that you would continue to bless us, strengthen us, and we won't fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, for we ask these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just before you leave, I want to thank God for our technical crew. Yeah. Richard, yeah. Stephen, yeah. and his lovely wife yeah. on the camera right here, center stage. Did you have a good time tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Reverend John, you want to close us out with saying anything? Come on. Rush, 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 rush. Take it off, take it off, take it off. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Thank God for the leadership of Reverend John Sherrod under the leadership of our pastor, Rod Caesar. We thank God for our Reverend Call. Everyone, just a wonderful job tonight. How many of you were blessed tonight? Amen. Amen, amen. It's just wonderful to have a church. Our leadership, our pastor, the bishop of our fellowship, allowing the creative gifts of God's people to be manifested in this church. Amen? Amen. 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 So we thank God. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's get ready to close out the word of prayer. And listen, just be, we, we're proud of our heritage. We are proud of all of the ethnicities that are represented here. And we are proud, not just because we're black, but because we're God's people. Amen. 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 And so we thank God. You know, all of this creativity comes from the heart of God. Yes. Yes. Amen. And so let's just bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we're so grateful, dear Father, that uh, you've placed gifts in men and that you've given us the ability, dear God, to, to sing and to dance and to project and to characterize, dear Lord. And all of this, dear God, reflects your attributes, dear Father. And so we thank you, dear Lord, that on tonight we were able to just celebrate who we are in you. Father, we pray that you would now uh, uh, protect us as we would leave this place. Lord, we pray for your uh, uh, mercies as we travel, whether it be by bus or train or walking. Lord, we pray that even those that uh, might need a lift, dear Lord, the love of your people would, oh God, leave even from this place and would take someone home and would uh, um, 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 allow someone to uh, uh, be driven home. Lord, we pray that your love would not stop here, but it would go right out into the streets and the highways and the byways, and that people would come in knowing this is a house of God. Father, we pray that, that you would bring us back uh, to this house of worship at your appointed time, and we won't fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, for we ask it in Jesus' name with thanksgiving, and we say amen, amen. and amen. Thank God.